What's going on Minecraft fans? My name's Luke the Notable, and in this video I'll be surviving and thriving 100 days in the Minecraft caves. I'll get all of this and more, and I think by the end of this video you'll want to live in the caves too. That does, however, bring us to our first question of how do we make a caves only world? I prefer not to use mods because I like people who watch these videos to be able to recreate them with a basic version of Minecraft. First thing I tried was simply setting the world to a lush caves biome, and yeah, it's pretty, but this isn't really a cave. I can see the sun. Did the same thing with dripstone, and it looks cool, but definitely not a cave. So then I just went to spawning myself inside of a cave, and this had several problems as well. One is obviously there's no resources, but the biggest thing for me was that it was really, really dark. So dark that the viewer can't really tell what's going on until I ended up dead. So I spawned myself inside the first mine shaft that I found. At least here, you can see what's happening. And I'm right above poisonous spiders. Great start. Realistically, finding a mine shaft is going to be step one in any cave survival challenge because it's the only place you can find wood. Feel free to hate me in the comments for spawning myself inside of one, but I'm telling you, this is still gonna be hard. I'm naked, and it's so dark! But yeah, even underground, all Minecraft playthroughs start the same. I got myself some wood tools. Shocker. Safety was my number one priority, so I went to work quickly, walling off my area. And I'm glad I did that, because I can hear that I'm now surrounded by spiders and zombies. I decided to be brave and take out that spider spawner, because, you know, it's day one, and if I die, I lose like five minutes. And I'm just not gonna live with spiders under my floorboards. They've gotta go. I did get bit, but as an experienced Minecrafter, I know that that alone won't kill me. So I went straight for the spawner, and now BAM! No more spiders. However, now I'm on two and a half hearts, and they're not gonna regenerate unless I find myself some food. I bet the experienced Minecrafters know what horrible, terrible acts I'm about to commit. Yeah, I'm gonna have to eat rotten flesh until I can find something better. Good news is, I found myself a zombie spawner, so that's unlimited food, and the chests themselves had food too. Nothing growable, but I can eat some good stuff in a pinch. After that, I just further worked on my safe zone. It's not much, but hey, I'm living in a cave. I had a very productive day one, but it's still very dangerous out there. I really gotta be careful. First thing I did day two was slab up my safe zone, so now regardless of light level, nothing can spawn here. This little hole's my home base and gives me tons of peace of mind. With some new torches, I got a look at the surrounding area, and it looks like I'm in a big ravine. However, before I go too far, I'm gonna need some food, so it's time to kill a whole family of zombies. Hey, it might be rotten flesh, but I'll take unlimited food. I got real lucky too. There's a totally separate spawner right nearby the first one. Because they can't cross the rails on the ground, this fight was pretty easy. I cleared out the spawner and found some more loot. This second chest even had seeds. Now I know for a fact I'm not ready for agriculture, but it was nice knowing that I don't have to eat rotten flesh forever. Went out exploring and killing more zombies day three, and one of them dropped a potato. That's huge. And I'm in a mine shaft, so you gotta know I found blocks of iron and coal. And at this stage in the game, every bit of coal is precious. It allows me to explore a little bit further. I think I'm doing pretty well for day three. There's seven different types of food in my inventory. And with all of my different seeds on day four, I thought it was a good time to set up a farm. I still need water, which I haven't found yet, but I'm hopeful that's not the rarest thing to find in a cave. Didn't take long to find some water, and now I've got everything I need to set up a farm. Oh, it's incredibly simple, but when these potatoes grow, I can make baked potatoes, and that's a way better food than rotten flesh. More exploring day five, my dream is to have everything lit up for maximum safety. And definitely can't let these spiders breed, those could easily kill me. See, here he goes, trying to kill me. I am lucky the defense in the mine shaft is pretty simple. You just make a little wall, and no one can really touch you. At the end of the day, I set up a glowberry farm on the ceiling. I'll take all the food I can get. I'm still out here exploring, getting stronger every day. This shield really helps. Here I found a regular spider spawner. This one I'm gonna keep, though I don't really have any plans for it. In the chest, I found a saddle. I'm not really sure if I could even get a horse down here. Yeah, if I had a horse, I'd probably just bonk my head over and over. That's a big nay. More cave spiders, too. It's the best monster in the game, said no one ever. Almost died, but didn't die. Poison can't kill you, and I'm lucky for that. All the exploring's paying off, though. The ravine has quite a lot of lights in it now, though it's still fairly dangerous. Crops are done! At least most of them, and now I should have enough to not have to eat rotten flesh anymore. I got myself a few baked potatoes and then made my farm even bigger. I can eat beets too, but those are fairly awful. I have wild dreams of carrots. There, that's about as big as the farm's gonna get. I'm just feeding myself, no villagers down here. Ah, dang it, wasn't recording for day eight. Did some stuff, got some magma blocks, more exploring and lighting. Day eight, I basically secured the entire mineshaft area, so now I've gotta set my sights on some new land. So I dug on down to deep slate because it's time to find some diamonds. Hey, there I go. I found some. How many do you think there were? There were two. I got another two diamonds as well for day nine. That's pretty fast. 
for me. Diamonds are nice, but I think what I really need is some storage. That chest is disgusting. But I barely scratched the surface of these deep caves and wanted more diamonds. Got a big old seven diamond vein here. That brings my total up to 12. A bunch of other materials too, but let's be honest, you only care about the diamonds. Here's some more diamonds, but just one. At this point, that's pretty much all I was going for. The caves are dangerous. Some diamond armor would really help my morale. I have a lot more days to go, and the fear of any one creeper ending me was really starting to take its toll. I found more diamonds and lava, and that brings up an interesting question. Can I go to the nether? Is that a cave? I didn't want to trouble myself with the definition of what makes a cave, so I decided on day 12 I would make myself some storage. It's carved into the rock, like everything else I'm gonna build in this video. And there it is all done, simple, yet expandable. I still would like some carrots, but definitely don't want to kill zombies all day, so it's time to do some work. I'm gonna convert one of these spawners into an automatic zombie killing machine. That magma block's coming in handy, it'll be a nice slow burn, very painful. Yeah, it really ain't much, it took me about a day to set up, but if this thing produces anything, I'll take Take it, it's free. And now it's time for more construction. I've been looking at my living quarters and have realized that they're very ugly. Cobblestone would pass in 2010, but there's more blocks. I need to change this. I'm not going for sheer beauty just yet. It's only day 14. My priority is safety. And I'm not really sure what else is gonna go in here. I don't wanna make it too complicated and then have to change it all later. You know, there's just some sections that I did quickly because I was naked in a cave and I can change that now. It's still a cave. That'll never change. But at least now my eyes don't hurt every time I go home. Now that that's done, I wanna set back out for more diamonds, but can't because I don't really have much coal. I can already tell that this is a cycle that I really will not appreciate for the rest of these hundred days. And look at that, by the end of the day, I'm already resorting to burning my wood supply. My mission day 16 is to get better access to lava so I can use it for fuel conveniently. I took the coordinates of that lava pool I found earlier, it really wasn't that far. With that lava, I got some obsidian and made an enchanting table. Kinda weird seeing it all alone like that. Getting bookshelves to make a proper enchanting room is gonna be a nightmare down in the caves, but hey, I'll take sharpness and knockback. And while I'm doing stuff with lava, I figure today was as good a day as any to make another portal. At this point, I just have enough obsidian to actually make a portal. I'm not gonna make one just yet. Found more diamonds, had to go underwater for them, but you won't hide from me. Oh wow, more mining footage in the video all about surviving in just a cave. This is, this is great. Hey man, full diamond armor won't craft itself. Luckily, I found a whole new cave system to explore. And while exploring, I found myself some amethyst. It's not diamonds, but it's pretty, I guess. I grabbed as much of it as I could. I don't have many blocks to work with down here. Almost everything I build turns out gray. No crystals though, not a single one. I even took some time to look it up to make sure I wasn't doing it wrong. Oh well, I'm sure I'll find more and then I'll get some crystals. All I do down here is mine and think of my regrets. Day 20, I spent time putting some stairs down to my mine. It's just the building code, I've gotta follow that. I've got so much deep slate from tunneling, it really wasn't an issue. And now when I come back up from exploring the deep caves, I don't bonk my head, which is nice. I even took it one step further and cut out the top of the tunnel too. I also killed my first enderman. He didn't drop a pearl, but he dropped a flower. That's kinda cute. And then wrapped up day 20 with some farming. It was a good one. I'm back in the caves day 21, of course, on the hunt for more diamonds. And this creeper must have heard because he helped me find some. How nice of him. Going through the caves and almost passed up another amethyst. That gray stuff is on the outside. This one did have crystals, which is good. Now I can make telescopes and lightning rods, which are absolutely useless in the caves. Not a bad trip though, every day I get closer to diamond armor. No, I didn't find any diamonds day 22, but I did find more purple stuff. I have no idea what to do with it, but I found two of them and mined a bunch. Not much else happened, so if you want, I can talk about how I don't get lost in the caves. It's a real easy system that anyone can do. When you're going through caves, placing down torches always make sure that the torch faces home. It's incredibly simple and it works very well. It also doesn't hurt to have coordinates if you ever get super lost. Though I will say it only works as well as you can do it. Don't place any torches on the ground. That'll mess you up. I'm really not sure what inspired me to do this, but today I'm digging up to the surface. Hang on, don't cancel me just yet. I'm not going up there. That's not in the rules. At first I just wanted to see if I could get some grass and of course right there I can. But then I broke the grass block and for a second thought about what it would be like to not have to live in a cave. No, I can't be tempted. I'm down here for a reason. I did put one block of dirt here, so I might be able to get grass, we'll see. Buried those emotions and got to work on an auto smelter. I get so much iron and gold that needs to be smelted, now I just dump it in here and let the lava do its work. Then I used some copper and amethyst to make myself a spyglass, and like I thought, it's not gonna be too useful. Wow, what a beautiful rock. 
The coal shortage is getting pretty bad, and if I don't find some soon, I'll have to burn the rest of my wood, and the hippies will hate that. Luckily, I found a new zombie spawner that was connected to a brand new mine shaft. That should have some coal in it. It did! Now I can continue my life of mining! And I did just that. I'm very close to some diamond armor. And very well could have lost all of my progress right here if I didn't expertly tank that creeper shot. I took that as a sign to go home and cover myself in diamonds, oh yeah. I can even kind of enchant the armor too. Protection 1 won't hurt. Feeling real confident with my new armor, day 26, I went back to that second mine shaft to look for more coal. I really wish I had fortune. I wish I had a lot of things. But wishing is pointless. Day 27, I'm still mining coal because I need more diamonds, because I need more possessions, because I have to fill a void in my life, because dad left the cave when I was four. More tunneling day 28, trying to find a new cave. Hey, found a new one. It looks big and gray, like the other ones. I swear to you, after this video, I'll never take the surface for granted again. Day 29, while exploring, I found a spider spawner, and it's right by zero zero. That could be helpful. Though really, I'd like a skeleton spawner because it's very difficult to find arrows down in the caves. You need feathers and chickens don't naturally spawn down here. But guess what I found? A child. Leading the kiddo back to my home was simple. He wants to kill me. No bedroom, no crib, no food. I'm not prepared for this at all. I got him home, named him Chad, and now he's my property. Until I can get something more permanent built, I'm just gonna lock him in the furnace room, but I have to be careful. He's quite sneaky. Day 30, I built a home for little Chad. It's a hole in the wall, literally. The whole reason I'm keeping him here is I have dreams of one day having some nice villager trades, but I can't do that yet. I need a lot more items. However, like everything, else in this video, doing that is not going to be simple. The only easy thing to get down here is rocks. Dug out two holes today. Hopefully one day, Chad will have a girlfriend. This is now my main focus. Villagers would make me so much more powerful. Oh, and I finally got a carrot today. I was very happy. First thing I did was bone meal some carrots. I wasn't lying when I said I really wanted them. And now I have some golden carrots. They're easily the best food in the game. Still trying to get Chad a date with this zombie spawner. Little did I know, that's not possible. So it looks like I'm just gonna have to keep exploring for a zombie villager. I mean, I did find Chad randomly. While tunneling for a new cave, I found an abandoned mine shaft at deep slate level. That could be big. I ran home to resupply before going through it. I have a tunnel right there because I'm intelligent. This new mine shaft leads into an absolutely massive cave section. I'm gonna take my time and get all this juicy loot. Like the start of this video, my first step was getting rid of that spider spawner. Those things are super annoying. That was pretty much the biggest threat. Now all the diamonds are mine. I also got an idea of using cave darkness to spawn zombie villagers. I only need one. Couldn't take that long. The spyglass might actually be useful for this. I can look into the dark sections and check what mobs have spawned. More diamonds, day 33, but you know, I found something even better. Took a look in this chest and found a god apple. That's awesome. If you eat one of these things, you'll survive basically anything, and it's always nice to have them in a hardcore run. Got another idea, day 34. I think this one could be big. I just made a simple dark room farm near base. Hopefully this could spawn me some zombie villagers. And nothing spawned all day. At least it didn't take that long. Wasn't recording most of day 35, as you can see, I lit up that big cave that I found. Somehow, day 36, while tunneling, I found myself a brand new mine shaft. And literally, all I have done is make a straight tunnel from my main base out. And I've got the deep slate to prove it. Ugh. So yeah, I'm still exploring the caves, but there's still a lot to find. Like this big new cave system. I bet you there's some zombie villagers in there, and if not, definitely some diamonds. I do want to take a minute and applaud Minecraft for how well these new caves look. I mean, that's just beautiful. Hey, look at that. While exploring day 38, I found a zombie villager. I had to fight for it and I was really scared that one of those skeletons was gonna shoot it. It was on my side. Once all the other monsters were gone, it was pretty easy getting them back home. Remember, I've got a tunnel system. Hey Chad, I got you a girlfriend and she's older than you. Hope you're into that. I named this one Finn. Trust me, you won't get the reference. It's for tours. Okay, so now if I want real villagers, I need more items. And of course, it's gonna be hard to get those items in the caves. The hardest item by far to get is gonna be sugar. I can only get that from witch drops down in the caves and witches are fairly rare. So now I need a rare drop from a rare creature, but at the start of this video, I said it wouldn't be easy. Because my dark room farm is useless, I have to use the darkness of the caves. It's gonna be slow, but hey, it's not like there's much else to do down here. Most of the time, I just get zombies, skeletons, and creepers. But I gotta say, when I do find a witch, my heart starts racing. It'd be real nice if I got that sugar drop immediately, but nope. YouTuber luck was not on my side. I will say I did get a lot of Endermen while I was down here, and that means more Ender Pearls. If I ever want to beat the game, I need them. Day 41 was another day of cave running, looking for witches, and didn't find a single one. Lots of Endermen, but I've got this little pool of water, so they can't touch me. It's a good system. At least I was able to find a witch on day 42. However, after shooting this one with an arrow, it dropped Glowstone, which is new, but not what I need. Understand that this whole time, I was really hating the inefficiency of this method, and was thinking of other ways to get sugar. Day 43, I got two more 
sure which spawns, but neither one drops sugar. I'm not sure how much longer I'll do this. It's not all a waste of time, at least not yet. A good amount of slime spawned down here too. I don't even know how long I've been down here staring into the blackness, hoping to find a witch. I give up. I found Chad and Finn naturally and couldn't help but think that maybe that's how I'd find my sugar. And you know, I did snag a good amount of ender pearls down there, so I think it's a fine time to go to the nether. Listen, I didn't just go to the nether. I've thought about this for a long time now, and the nether is pretty much a cave. Replace all of the nether blocks with stone, and it would look like a cave. You can't see the sun. Really, you have no argument against me. I also can't physically beat the game unless I go to the nether, and beating the game caves only was a goal of mine. Listen, if you don't like it, I'll give you some time. You can write a comment. Let me know. Are you done? Did you get it out of your system? Then let's continue. Yeah, I just fell in lava, but it was close enough to the shore where I didn't have to use my god apple. That's kind of like my fire potion. I made that dangerous cobblestone bridge because I had to connect myself to some nether wastes. I need mushrooms. I also found a ruined nether portal and only got burned slightly. Hey, there's the brown mushrooms. Now all I need to cure some villagers is some sugar, which is easier said than done. Before I go too much further in the nether though, I'd like to have a fire potion, so I'm gonna try trading with some piglins. Got a fire potion, so now I don't have to waste my god apple if I fall in lava. In my experience with the nether, one of the best ways to find a fortress, at least the safest, is tunneling, and that's what I'm doing here. It might take a while, but if you go in every direction a couple hundred blocks, you'll probably run into a fortress. The only time it gets dangerous is when you're over a pool of lava and a gas attacks you, like what's happening here. And this time, I got bonked into a lava lake. Awesome. Tried to use my splash potion of fire resistance and didn't have anything to splash on, so now I've got to eat my god apple. Ugh, I won't die but I definitely died a little bit inside. I could have kept going, but if I fall in lava again, I'm dead, so I just went back home. All right, so my file for day 47 is actually two days, so we're just gonna call it an extra long day. I don't wanna confuse you or me. While going around looking for piglins, I stumbled upon another fortress. Didn't even have to tunnel for this one. And the blaze spawner was right there too. I guess Minecraft felt bad about me having to eat my god apple. Got a bunch of blaze rods and tried to find my way back home. Remember, I stumbled upon that nether fortress. It took a while, but I did get back home. My portal's near zero, zero so that was easy. All right, for real this time, now it's day 48. I'm gonna try to find the end fortress while inside of a cave. It's not gonna be easy. Not easy, but definitely possible, even though I do lose my ender pearl every time I throw one. I have no idea how long this is gonna take, but there should be some really helpful items inside of the end fortress, and that was pushing me along. Here's my general strategy. I dig a straight tunnel, and whenever I hit an open section, I throw an eye of ender to make sure I'm going the right way. Sometimes I'd get lucky in the open section to be in the same direction my I was pointing. Even with the luck though, this is gonna be a hard job. Wouldn't recommend doing this if you don't have to. Had to go back home day 50. The one nice thing about this method is you get a tunnel straight home. After a short resupply, I was back at it. I don't know if you noticed, but I did all of that tunneling with my golden helmet on from the nether. Yeah, still just mining day 51. There's gonna be a lot of that. The worst part was definitely running into water. That was just annoying. Absolutely nothing about this is precise, but to me it kind of seems like all I have to do is go due north. Got a little distracted by sunlight light and snowballs day 53. If I ever do fight the ender dragon, I'll need phantoms and that hole just might be able to get me some. But I had to go home. My pickaxe wasn't feeling too good. I can tell I'm very close, but I really don't have the pearls to waste to find this thing right now. Yeah, and after digging this tunnel, I could tell I was really, really close. If I just had a few more pearls, I'd find it. So I went back to the nether in a warped forest where endermen spawn all the time. I need some pearls. I did some trading too. I got more gold and needed a fire potion. Went back to my tunnel and realized all that digging was pointless. I was right on top of the end fortress the whole time. Simply dug down and there it is. My hard work just paid off. I dropped in right by the library too. Books were a big reason I came down here. Oh yeah, my mind was racing with all the enchantments I could get now. Fortune, protection, because creepers could still kill me if they got close enough, but not with protection for diamond armor. Found the portal room too, and now I can potentially beat the game, living only in caves. I went back home just to take a quick dump. I had so much loot in my inventory. I also wanted to build another highway right to the end, so this way I don't have to walk all the way through the overworld. The end fortress spawned inside of a lush caves biome and that stuff's pretty much the only thing that's beautiful down in the caves. I did get a little lost, but that just forced me to explore the whole thing. And now I'm chopping wood. Hopefully if I do enough today, I'll never need wood again. Really, I'm just clearing trees to make it easier to get to the nether fortress. It serves two purposes. To not get lost in the nether on the way to the fortress, I use a similar system to that I used in the caves and it works well. These days are really chaotic. Now I'm working on a brand new project using those first two zombie spawners 
I found. I want good armor, and for that I need levels, so I'm gonna try to make a double zombie spawner XP farm. The construction footage is a little confusing, it's all underground, so it's tough to tell what I'm doing. It's also custom, which made me nervous, but I've played enough Minecraft, I should be able to figure it out. It's pretty ugly, and not just because it's made of mostly cobblestone, but I think it works. The only thing it doesn't have at this point is a bubble elevator, which will be annoying to build without seaweed. Annoying? Sure, but not impossible. I mean, check out all my buckets. It's just another thing in the long list of things that are different down here, but I think you got that by watching this video. I will never, ever show you the intricacies of this design because you'll make fun of me, but it works pretty well too. I was able to get a decent amount of XP today. It is a double farm. So day 63, I just tested the farm. I want to see how much XP I can get in a day. It's not amazing, but it is free, and if I don't find a better method, this one will work. I was really close to level 30, so I kept farming day 64. And then I got what I've been wanting for a very long time. Finally, a fortune 3 pickaxe. Then I added efficiency, and this thing's awesome. Living in the caves, you need a good pick. Now, my zombie farm has already been a great success, but I wanted to see if I could make it even better. I had a thought of adding more rooms on top of it all, so I could maybe spawn skeletons and get arrows, which I really have a hard time finding. From what I can tell, it's not really working. Maybe it'll spawn a skeleton or two, but it's still mostly zombies. That's fine, but now I'm trying to increase the spawn rates even more, and it seems like if I stand by the spawners, it's faster. Also, instead of using a ladder, I have my own elevator to get up and down faster. It's a small upgrade, but I'm sure it'll help. I'll be honest, I didn't expect to spend this much time on the zombie farm, but now with the possibility of enchantments, I need it. But you know what I need even more? A bedroom. It's been 67 days, and I haven't slept once. And day 69 is on its way, I need a bedroom. Like everything else that I've built so far, it'll be carved into the rock, but this one's gonna be built near the surface. The sweet smell of fresh air. Raindrops on my face. Grass between my toes. I long for it, but I cannot have it. This whole video gives me quarantine vibes. I'm stuck in my house and renovating it because I can't help but see how ugly it is. Finally found a use for that purple stuff. Decoration. That's all it's really good for. The structure's mostly done, day 68. Now I want to build a contraption so I can see the surface. I just haven't really done anything redstone and figured this was a decent idea. It works! It's simple. Don't applaud me. Nice, day 69. Time to make myself a bedroom. It's not gonna be much, it's just me down here and the voices. I also decided to put in some redstone. I have so much of it, I might as well. I just installed a cute little fireplace that can be turned on and off with the press of a button. I still need some grass to grow before I can call it complete, but at least now I have a place to sleep. It's been 69 days, I'll sleep anywhere. Ah, I'm feeling so refreshed. What should I do today? Nothing like a good old fashioned witch hunt. While I was out here, I also went to that big hole that I found earlier. I could probably get phantoms if I didn't just sleep. A lot of nothing today, really, but in the caves, that happens. I'm still out here looking for witch I need that sugar, but only found creepers. I've definitely hit somewhat of a power wall, and the only way to get over it is some sugar. I guess I could use my zombie farm to get the levels for better enchantments. It's just a little slow and boring to watch. I will say, though, I did just get an infinity bow. That'll help my arrow problem. Got a new plan for levels. I'm gonna plunder the nether for quartz. It's not a very renewable method, but it can work once. Got a bunch of levels and some better gear. I'm stashing it all in a chest until it's ready. Day 75, I set up a very simple strider dock. I had hopes of finding good gear in the nether. And after all that work, I realized my big old lava pool doesn't really connect to anything. This was worthless. So I just mined up some more quartz with my new fortune pick. I get quite a bit of it. Got a bunch of XP, but then put it over the edge with my zombie farm. And after getting a little lucky, I've got a full set of diamond armor with protection four. So now that I've got armor for fighting the dragon, I still need phantoms. So I went to widening that hole today. Listen, say what you will. I'm still like three whole blocks in the cave. This is legal. Now that's one wide orifice. Reminds me of your mom. Had to wait until the night time of day 79 and no phantoms came out. I really shouldn't have slept. I had to burn some time before phantoms will spawn, so I checked out some of the flooded caves. I had a hope that maybe I'd find some sugarcane down there. I didn't find sugarcane, but I did find a little opening and phantoms were spawning now. That's convenient. Killed a few and got two membranes. That's enough. While checking out the underwater caves some more, I spotted a nearby ocean structure. I mean, I guess I probably should have made my own tunnel, but it was so close I just swam over. I got a buried treasure map out of there and I thought it might be cool to try to find some buried treasure while buried myself. Getting to the treasure was not that tough. I already have a massive tunnel system. Not sure why I thought that was gonna be hard, but I found the treasure very quickly. I was kinda hoping I'd get some emeralds out of this thing. I haven't found any all playthrough. The loot was fine, but I got something now better than treasure. A great idea. I went back home and made a map using paper that I found in the end fortress. Maps don't work underground. They just give you a picture of the overworld when you use them inside of a cave, and I think the smart players might know what I'm doing here. You see that? It's sand. And when you find sand, 
Sometimes you find sugar cane. Of course, I'll have to tunnel over there, but at least now I know where I can maybe find some sugar. And I found some. Just have to dig under this river. Can't believe I didn't think of this earlier. I wanted villager trades more than everything else in this playthrough. Got myself right under that sugar cane and dug it out. That was a satisfying moment right there. And this is way better than getting sugar from a witch, because you can actually farm sugar cane. If I got a sugar drop, it would be one and done. You gotta know I went straight to curing. I don't got too much time to make some profits. Finn and Chad are gonna live in the old dark room farm, most because I don't want to take the time to carve something new. In the notes, I say that I fixed the place up, but I really didn't do that. I just made it a cage. Hope you guys like your big empty room. This is better than being zombies, right? Wasn't recording for the first part of day 85, but now I've got some villager babies. I got really rich really fast. I kind of forgot the deals were gonna be insane because they're cured. Did a little librarian resetting until Chad would sell me Feather Falling 4, and I couldn't pass that up. It'll help with the dragon. And when those babies grow up, I'll have so much more to trade for. The only thing getting me sad is that I got it so late. Day 86 started off great. People started falling through the floor. This right here, this is exactly why these these guys can't have their freedom. Got myself a new mending library, and that's essential. I spent the rest of the day trying to get looting three and got looting two. I'll take it. I just put looting on my sword. We all know what's happening next. I'm gonna try to fight the wither, and I'm confident I can get three skulls quickly using my new sword. I was doing pretty well. Within eight wither skeleton kills, I had gotten the first skull. That's not bad. I took out even more day 88, but was still dry. Sometimes that's just how it is. Right at the start of day 89, though, I got another skull. That felt good. Then no more the rest of the day. Sometimes that last one can be elusive. Day 90, after all that pain in the nether, I finally got my last skull. What's funny though is on my way out, I got some more skeletons and another skull. Thanks, I guess. Yeah, I just put it over the doorway, not sure what else to do with it. All right, now I'm back home and the brightness is still weird. Sorry, I don't realize for a day or two. I do have the wither skulls, but I'm gonna need some milk. You don't wanna fight the wither without it. Now for that, I'll need a cow, but it looks like there's one on that hill over there. I think I can dig to him, he's not that far. The way I see it, I'm technically making my own cave. This is legal. It took me all day to get this cow because I couldn't touch the surface, but I still got him. I named him Chris the Cave Cow, a male cow that produces white stuff. Day 92, I figured was a good day to finish up the bedroom decor. I spent a lot of time bone mealing, trying to get some different types of flowers. It was a long process, but I got him. You know, I don't get much greenery down in the cave and wanted to bring some of that in. I put some spore blossoms in the corners and they give off a really nice green particle effect. Now that I say that, it seems a little weird to have spores in your living area. They would condemn your house and real life, but whatever, it's Minecraft. Now, I've had the idea of what I'm gonna do day 93 for a while, I just haven't acted on it. It's quite frivolous. I think you can already tell that I'm making a big red X right where my land is. The idea is that it would show up on the map, and you know, it kinda does. I very recently found out about the joys of concrete in Minecraft, and I'm using that for the X. Alright, that looks pretty good, and it was totally worth ripping out the ceiling. Unfortunately, when I put the map on the wall, my green player indicator is showing. I don't know how to fix that. Oh well, I've already done it. Now I'm doing something else I've had on my list for a while. I gotta clean up this cave. I just wanted to add some of those personal touches, like stairs in certain areas. I also wanted to put all of the lights on the wall instead of the floor, and I did that today. A lot of this was done when I was naked, but I think now I'm proud to call it home. Now it won't be a Luke the Notable 100 days without a monument, so it's time to build one today. I found a nice area in the ravine that I don't really travel too often and carved out some rock for the monument. It'll be a pixel art version of my head made with a few blocks that I can use down here in the caves. No, not creepy at all. I took a little more time cleaning everything up in here. It's a cave, it's never gonna be perfect, but I can try. And there it is, all done. I'm happy with it, but it's a monument to me. I probably should be. Now you already know that I'm going to beat the wither. However, that begs the question, where's the beacon gonna go? My plan's to put it right here on this block because it's the only block in my whole base that can naturally get hit by sunlight. You'll see what I mean. If I put glass here, I'll retain the use of my bubble elevator as well as letting light all the way down. And like I said, it's the only block in my whole base with access to the sky, which you need for a beacon. And it happens to be a central location, so it's the best place by far to put a beacon. All this talk of getting a beacon, it's time to actually do it. Though, first thing you gotta do is dig a tunnel whenever you wanna fight the wither. It's the best way. This tunnel happened to be through Deep Slate. I'm not sure if that'll help. I think it might. Let's just get on with it. It's wither time. Oh, maybe not. Well, that was embarrassing. I'll just blame my cave-induced insanity. I'm about as prepared as you can get for fighting him, and this is not my first time. Shouldn't be too bad. It kind of seemed like the deep slate helped a little bit. He wasn't able to get as high as he normally does. Yeah, the fight was over in just a few seconds, but that's normally how the Java one goes. But the bedrock wither. Oh. I still have nightmares. And the beacon worked perfectly. I didn't think it wouldn't. I'm just happy. All right, now it's time to fight the Ender Dragon and I spent day 99 getting there. You may be sitting there at home asking why I didn't use my convenient nether tunnel. 
and it's because I forgot. Listen, if it wasn't for my stupidity, I wouldn't have found this diamond. But now I'm here. Time for the dragon fight. Oh, it's nowhere near my first time fighting the dragon, and even for starting in the caves, I'm very well equipped to handle it. I had no idea I would do this well in a hundred days of only caves. I mean, look at me. I have slow falling potions. It was definitely annoying at times, but all of my accomplishments felt so much sweeter because of that, and I think that's what makes a great challenge. Try this one yourself. I think in the end, you'll be surprised at how much you enjoy it. Anyway, with all my gear and prep, this Ender Dragon fight was nothing special. I took it down and won the game. I really don't know if I'll continue this. I mean, it's always a possibility. The Deep Dark is coming out. That might be a nice sequel. We'll see. If you'd like to take a look at the world for yourself, make sure to check the link in the description. You can find a world download there. Sorry, Bedrock Boys. Only Java. Nothing personal. Do want to let you know I got a lot more Minecraft content coming that I really think you're going to enjoy. And of course, 3,000 days. Thank you all for watching. Please stay notable. I'll see you in the next video.